Good afternoon. Today is the last day of April, and I wanted to give you a quick glimpse of what is going on in our garden. Uh, we got quite a few things actually outside growing already. Uh, they're not quite as far along as our hoop houses, but uh, things are really taking off. We'll start with our prop house. This is where a lot of the hustle and bustle is this time of year. It's bursting at the seams with transplants. Uh, so this will also give you a glimpse if um, you support us or if, if you're curious if we have plants to sell. I'll quick show you a little bit of what we're going to have for sale in a couple weeks at our plant sale. That's going to be May 12th to 13th. Um, and just keep, uh, if you're on our email list, I'll send an email out when it gets closer to remind you. Uh, but just um, keep looking, see uh, when the updates are coming. Um, so we'll start here. Got all of our peppers. Bell, mini sweet peppers, and th things are looking wonderful. We got beets, all of our succession lettuce plantings. These are packs of lettuce that are going to be for sale. So four, four, these are all head lettuce. There'll be four in a pack. Um, and then this is cilantro. These I'm going to pot up this week into bigger pots. Those are uh, cabbage and broccoli. Those will be for sale. And whatever peppers are left after we transplant, there'll be a few left. We'll have some bell peppers and probably some hot peppers for sale. Um, and our tomatoes here, they're, they are looking beautiful. So all these are what we're gonna plant in our hoop houses. Over here is what's gonna be for sale. So here we have Sun Gold, which is a nice orange tomato, our favorite cherry tomato. So these are really taking off. These were just started like five weeks ago. So in five weeks and two weeks, they'll be up here and they'll probably be starting to flower already. Um, so they'll be ready to go for your gardens um, here. So we had to expand our table space this year. We like to start plants in half of it and grow some early crops in the other half. As you can see here, we have our early lettuce, head lettuce, interplanted with zucchini. So these lettuces are pretty much ready to harvest. Uh, we're going to be taking orders this week and we're going to harvest hopefully most of the lettuce and then these zucchinis will fill in and it'll give us the early picking of zucchini. That's one thing we, we use a lot of and like. Um, and here we have all of our herbs and perennial plants. Um, so yeah, some of the perennials are herbs, some of the perennials are flowers. Uh, but yeah, we got, they don't look, we just split them a couple days ago so they might look a little rough but in two weeks They'll be nice and, and filled out. Um, so yeah, we keep going. There's dill, there's parsley, cilantro, basil. These are these will be nice, nice packs of basil to go in your garden. And all these are potted up. This is all compost from our property that we made. Um, so it's not certified organic, but in our eyes, it's better than organic. It's going to have more biology in the in the soil mix. And so that, that's actually what all of our tomato plants are potted up into is our our homemade compost and the results we get will beat anything you get at a, a greenhouse. Okay. So let's go this way here. So we don't have any extra this year to sell. This is our asparagus bed. See there's nice crowns coming up. But this is only the second year of growing, so we've harvested a few for us to use. Um, but we'll want, we'll actually leave most of them go to seed, so that way next year the, the crowns are bigger and we'll put off even bigger shoots. So these we could actually harvest. This is purple passion. And here we have that's some kale over there that overwintered. I'm just letting go flower. We don't need those beds right now, so I'm just letting it go to flower for the pollinators. And I might actually save some seed off of it. Here we have our succession plantings of carrots. So we have carrots in this bed. I don't know if you can tell, but they're up. They're looking really nice. This bed here was, was planted. Um, it's not quite up, uh, but it should come up any day now. Then. These beds here will just be succession plantings of carrots. Over here we have our first planting of spinach, arugula, kale, that's outside. So this will probably be ready two to three weeks. 
So at that point, the hoop houses will be too warm for all these crops, so I start pointing them outside. Here we have turnips, radishes, um, some green onions down at the bottom. And I skipped a row here because this is where our um, zucchini is going to go in that row. We'll come to our first hoop house here. Just watch your step. And here we have some rhubarb, which we actually will probably harvest some and put for sale uh, this coming Friday. Uh, for people who ever places orders, we'll have some rhubarb there. So this bed here, this has just been mulched, not tilled. And you can see these plants are beautiful. We even have some strawberries coming up that came up from some, um, we used to have strawberries here to the right where their asparagus was. And some berries that were bad that we just threw off, they actually, some of them, <laughs> the seeds germinated and created a new plant. So I have no idea what variety of this is, but these leaves are beautiful, healthy, no disease whatsoever. So we'll see, if they produce a nice berry, I can take all these runners and actually start my own variety and get a new patch somewhere else. Here we have, um, the first bed's gonna be beets. It was spinach, we just took that out. We have beets that are gonna go in this week. We have celery in this bed here. This is our first year that we're actually putting in the hoop house, which will hopefully get us celery earlier and we'll be able to control the water on it better and have juicier, bigger stalks, hopefully. And here we have our arugula interplanted with potatoes. So that arugula, we'll probably get one more harvest off of it, then I'll take it out and that will let the potatoes fill in that area. Same thing with the baby kale on, on that far bed. We actually did have celery in the hoop house last year. In the fall. We've never we've never planted our like main season celery crop inside. But what we and, did have inside was beautiful. Yeah. In the fall we usually do that just to so we can protect it from the cold. But we've noticed that it's the plants are way healthier in the fall inside a hoop house than outside. So we're gonna try the summer having them inside too. These are all apple trees. They're really flowering. See, there's bees on here. Honey bees. One right here going. It's good. We're getting some breaks in the cloudy weather. A lot of pollinators to come out and do their thing. Uh-oh, we got chicks out. New layers. They're, we have a fence, but they're small enough to fit through the fence, yeah, and it's not it's not electrified, which is fine. But we have ducks in there, so it at least keeps the ducks in. But the chicks, at this point, can go wherever. They'll be big enough in about a month that they can't get through. But that's all right. So here we have our sugar snap peas. Three beds of it, so we'll have a nice harvest in June, hopefully. We planted these what about three weeks ago. Uh, no, month. Was it the beginning of the month, I think? Beginning of April? So almost a month, yeah. There's onions. We just have a, about a half bed along the hoop house. We planted onions in this year. Next hoop house here, we call it a cat tunnel. It's not really a cat tunnel. It was supposed to be one, but we made it more of a permanent structure. But we have our last planting of spinach in the hoop house here. So we have just one row and we do that um, so we can plant carrots on the side. And the spinach will come out in about a week or two when our tomatoes are ready to go in. And so we'll take the spinach out and we'll interplant tomatoes then with the carrots. And that'll allow the carrot, by the time the tomatoes grow, the carrots, or by the time the tomatoes grow and fill out the area, the carrots have time to mature and then we can harvest those just to make use of all the space. So in the first bed, first bed to the right over there is beets. And we have Swiss chard and kale, bunching kale down at the bottom. And then you have these two beds and then this bed here is just beets. And 
These three beds are gonna be tomatoes. That far bed isn't. So the kale and Swiss chard will pretty much be in there all year. But these three beds, we leave kind of that, once the spinach comes out, we have, we'll have open space in the middle to plant our tomatoes into. So. And we have way more spinach now than we need. It's kind of going crazy. So here we have the same thing. We got um, onions here on the edge. It's a smaller bed. So we, we experimented with planting uh, three, bun three onions in a bunch in that other row. Here we did individually. But we planted two rows and did them a little closer together. So we'll see the size of the onions, how they look, and how they grow. But I like to keep them there just to give the soil biology food to eat. And when we need that bed, I'll just come through and, and kind of chop up all the tops. And have the here. here we have the first outdoor planting of lettuce. So I just did one row here because these three beds here are going to be a new patch of strawberries. And when we do strawberries, new patch the strawberries take forever to fill out so we plant crops on the edge of those beds to make use of that space until the strawberries will fill it out so we'll, ha we'll have lettuce here and we'll actually the next planting will be on the other side of this bed so we'll actually have two rows here but that'll leave the middle open for strawberries just like our hoop house now, so that's the same thing we did with these strawberries last year and they filled in wonderfully so yeah, these got some this is our late variety, so the blooms are just starting to come out. These are out, they're not open, but they're, you see this one? These blooms here are starting to poke out. So, a frost now would mean that we'd have to cover these. Oh, actually, there's some that are open. We would have to cover these, because at this stage, they're very susceptible to being frozen off. our experiment with doing strawberries indoors inside a hoop house and they look really lush and green we'll see as far as the yield is with the strawberries how they turn out uh, they're a little sporadic I'm not quite sure this is the edge so there might be places that are wetter just from the water when it comes off the hoop house we have the waterway but some of it might kind of wash back in it might create some wetter areas here we have radishes ready but then we have red potatoes planted next to it they're looking really nice and this is what happened so we had to protect these and the real cover may have been hitting this plant this is what happens when it freezes so these leaves were probably touching the row cover and these all died although but it doesn't really matter the growing point is still there but it does kind of stunt the plant a little bit but as long as your growing points are fine it'll keep growing so yeah we got our more lettuce at the top so to the left we have salad greens those are going to be ready to harvest this week in this row we have head lettuce that's our next planting after the prop house we'll come in here get those before we go outside and then we have turnips so first planting of turnips they may be ready this week i'm not sure uh, but it might take them another week yet and then we have beets in here as well so these two beds are going to be our peppers and so we kind of do the same thing with peppers with interplanting as we do tomatoes. That's why we just have two rows of beets. Otherwise, we'd have three rows of beets. So. And this actually, I don't know how that lettuce came up, but it looks really nice. <clears throat> Somehow it's in that lettuce seed got in. So we're almost done. I know this is long, but if you're sticking with us, thank you. Potatoes, same family as tomatoes, but uh, yeah, these are all potatoes. So we got yellow, uh, red, we planted a couple gold. The golds are actually in another section, but um, they're not coming up, but they're probably rooting under there. So there's a lot going on right now, but in a month's time, we'll do the next one. Hopefully, this will be hopefully a lot greener and more to show there. And we're trying blue potatoes for the first time this year as well.
beds are going to be our sweet potatoes and we do the same thing with inner planting uh, so we, we have arugula here and this on this side we have onions ball bean onions one row on the south side of every each bed and then in between we'll plant our slips sweet potato slips and the slips take forever to fill out and that gives enough time for the onions to mature and, and get a harvest in that area before the sweet potatoes take over. We have two rows of garlic. Garlic is beautiful. This is actually kind of the most exciting part of the garden this time of year is our, our hedgerows, our perennial hedgerows. strawberries do not only in the hedgerow but just in mulch and wood chips so I had some extra starts from our bed we planted last year or patch we planted last year I just threw them in here and we'll see how they do um, but yeah there's all sorts of flowers so this is burning heart flower that's a really vibrant flower this is the same thing coming up we have blueberries here those are only a couple years old flower here and then down this is our another hedgerow but it's mostly a raspberry hedge so we have rhubarb in here too and we do have some perennial flowers on this edge but the raspberries once they establish will probably take all the perennial flowers out we kind of did that just to fill in this area until the raspberries took over but yeah, you see they're they're really the raspberries are reaching out. They really took off last year and they're growing about ten feet out into the garden now, so we'll have to dig those up and take those out. So yeah, when you have nice healthy soil your plants will really just take off and, and love it. So that's about it for now. Um, there's always more to show, but we'll cut that off for today. And I hope you enjoyed seeing what it looks like now and in a month's time. Check back. Um, things will definitely change quickly this time of year. So until next time, eat well.